Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. I am Starco Gaming and we are back with another Dragon Champion video. Guys, today we're gonna be uh, continuing our series about pride characters to get ready for the buff event that's coming in about a week now uh, from the time that this video is going to be released uh, so today we're going to talk about Rival. Rival, we are not going to be using him as a leader if you if we use him for this event we're going to be using him just as a dps character uh, but before we get into the details guys if you are new to the game or like your level 15 or below make sure to use the promo code starco to get the 10 dollars worth of freebies to do so it's very very simple you go in settings use promo code and you enter the word starco s-t-a-r-k-o and you press ok and you will get um 10 dollars worth of freebies which include uh, among other things 500 drag coins and 250,000 gold so it helps you to get ad start in the game definitely so let's jump in the roster here and let's take a look at revel how shall we build revel how we show how shall we upgrade his skills how shall we ruin him how what artifact can actually be very useful on him well that's the things we're going to be looking at in this video i'm going to start with the skills as i said his leadership is not going to be important here and i don't feel that his leadership is really strong compared to other leadership for pride characters or order characters or um, uh, clan characters. So um, honestly, his leadership, it's kind of not that important. Now, if you're going to use this leadership in other content, might be worth getting to level six, but um, I'll say 95% of the case, you will not be using Revolt as a leader. So uh, you can totally ignore that leadership uh, but if you don't ignore it what we get at level six here is all eyes from the pride gain 30 percent of their maximum health and a 50 percent chance to restore one turn to a random ability at the start of their turn why this leadership is not good enough it's not because the leadership is not good this this could be an awesome leadership but the hero leadership is just so much better for the pride characters and since this leadership only applied to pride characters and hero has a better leadership that's kind of tell you guys that uh, you ignore that leadership pretty much so uh, you don't have to use scrolls on that leadership now i'm going to go with the first passive here uh, revolt deal 20 percent more damage for each stacks of bleedings on enemies uh honestly the skill um can actually be good but usually uh, at least for the buff events, you're not going to have so much bleeding uh, going around. So this skill for that particular event is not that important, important. But now if you actually build a bleed team for raids or stuff like that, that skill is going to be very, very important. So if we if you build this guy for a bleed team in the raid, that skill is so important to get to level six but for the buff event that skill does not really matter level five level four is good enough for this skills now we go with the third skill uh, the third skill is deal 400 percent of physical damage to an enemy if the target is bleeding and recover 75 percent of the turn meter again if you playing this guy in the bleed team the skills has to be to level six but even if you don't play this guy in the bleed bleed team you can see if we drop that and then if we don't we don't pay attention to the bleeding it will lose 70 percent damage uh, physical damage by going from level six to level five so this skills is going to be very very important to get to level six next we have the aoe skills uh, the aoe skills is pretty basic i find this skill is actually quite boring uh deal 240 percent of physical damage to all enemies and uh, that is pretty much it. if you drop it it's 200 percent so level five is totally fine if you don't have the scrolls here and then you have the first skill uh, first skills is deal 240% of physical damage to an enemy and inflict bleeding for two turns. Now, if you 
get that to level 5 for example uh, you lose 40% of damage which is actually not that important but your guaranteed bleeding become 80% chance to inflict bleeding so this this skills is a very 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 important to get to level 6 so the skill priority to actually get to level 6 will be skill number 3 skill number one so skill number two we're gonna name the, the name of the skill so eviscerate is the most important skill to get to level six then uh, rupture is the second most important skill to get to level six then i'll say if you really want a third skill to get to level six will be swipe but i don't really recommend getting more than two skills to level six on this character only two skills that are very important uh, unless you're actually going to be playing him in the bleed team then the skills become the number three priority pretty much so that covered the skills uh by the way guys if you have any question about the skills how to use them or anything like that uh, you know you can always leave a comment in the comment section and i'll get back to you so now if we talk about the runes guys how do we want to set this guy up well uh, you have two different setup you can do you can go with four speed and two critical rate uh, To get him to go as often as possible speed seems to be very very important for the buff event So if you're only building him for the buff event, I will actually recommend four speed rune with two critical critical chance runes but if you build them globally to be able to cover the buff event and other content too uh, the best setup is two critical chance with four damage increase rune which will give you two sets the 15 percent damage increase and the eight percent critical chance now the primaries what primaries do you do want to go uh, obviously the northeast is going to be speed speed is the most important primary to put there if we go with the south primary is going to be critical damage we're building him from for critical rates so well critical chance that's the tie the, the name in that game so we're building him for critical chance so you want to do more critical damage so critical damage is the second primary here and the last primary is going to be potency on the northwest because you want that the bleeding to actually apply uh, if you don't really care about the damage from the bleeding and just want more basic damage you could definitely go with a damage rune here instead of going with a potency rune that is an alternative that's actually totally viable now secondary stats what stats do you want to focus on you want to focus on speed critical chance potency and damage those are the secondary stats you want to focus like here you can see speed damage we got potency, speed, damage, critical chance, potency, uh, potency, that's it. That one's actually pretty boring. Uh, critical chance, damage, and then the last one, critical chance, potency, damage, and you can see the pattern. Uh, those are the stats you want to have on him. So critical chance number one, speed number two, and damage number three as a priority, and then potency number four as priority. Uh, as a secondary stat and that's pretty much the setup I like to have on him again if you're only building this characters for uh, the buff event you want to go four speed and two critical chance instead of four damage and two critical chance now if we take a look at the uh, artifact uh, artifact the artifact I went with is this one uh, the cup of cheer so we can actually get critical damage increased by 12 percent 2400 hp and lending three hits to a single target as a 30 percent chance to apply damage increase and carry to increase for two turns which it's not really gonna happen because we don't have multi hit with this character but that actually good be a good very good one for for sharp actually i think that will be amazing for sharp but anyway what matters here is the critical damage and the hp uh that is what matter with artifact at this point we're not at the point to really care about uh what this extra ability is going to do what's really important is to get the extra stats here 12 percent critical damage and hp i think this is the best setup for this guy, I think it's better than going going to get damage or uh, tenacity or potency. I think this is really about getting him uh, more damage, more critical damage. You can see here on the stat sheet, we are close to 190% uh, 
uh, critical damage. So when we get a critical hit, instead of doing 100% uh, damage, we do 190% damage, which can do a lot of damage. We go down to the speed. We have 161 speed. This is definitely too low in speed for the buff event. Uh, for the buff event, you want to have that at least above 180. So it's definitely not optimal for that. Um, if I want to do and make a video to kill the buff event, uh, I will need to change uh, the four the four damage rune I have on this guy for the fourth speed rune. Definitely. Next, uh, potency is 58%, which is actually uh, not bad at all. 40% uh, is is decent. Anything above 50% is pretty 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 good basically if we can explain the potency how it works well for example the the buff we are trying to apply bleed so we have a hundred percent chance to apply bleed then we take the opponent tenacity uh, so we take the hundred percent we we deduct the tenacity so if the opponent has 40 percent tenacity we take the hundred percent minus 40 percent and then we had the potency and here will be for 58 percent for example so that if we take this whole thing up that will mean i have 118 percent chance to apply the bleed for example if the opponent has 40 percent tenacity so hopefully that clears things out about uh buff and how to apply it and how tenacity and potency actually work on that now that is pretty much how to build this character if you have any question again comment feedback there's a comment section down below for this video was helpful and will help you prepare for the buff event and be aware guys this buff event is gonna be very 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 hard and a lot of people will not be able to achieve that event unless the dev decided to, to actually nerf it before it gets released because this is not a legendary event we're gonna be calling it a super legendary event because this is gonna be the hardest one we had so far so you better buff the crap out of your characters if you want to achieve a kill on uh, level seven stage seven the event which is the only stage that matter to actually recruit uh, a buff pretty much and buff is going to be a top meta is going to be more ridiculous than more doom so uh, you really want to get that guy so it's going to take a lot of investment for you guys anyway guys enough uh, blabbering here <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed this video guys uh, if you did make sure to drop a like on this video to tell youtube that you enjoyed the video so they know they should share this video and also guys Enjoy playing Dragon Champion and well, I will see you guys again in the next video. Thank you.